Well, hello everybody, Bill Shaka here. <laughs> Welcome to the, lit the next edition of Crush Your Company's Quota. Okay, I've been doing a lot of reading uh, recently on uh, sales leadership psychology. And uh, I like to call today, what are you into? Now, uh, we're not talking about uh, personal hobbies. We're talking about what your predominant thoughts are once you hit the, the work day. And I'd like to give some specific examples based on where you are in terms of your sales um, position and then I'd like to give a general overarching concept. So please, folks, uh, take, this, uh, uh, take this to heart because there is a ton of really important psychological information in this. Uh, as a matter of fact, <clears throat> it's so important, I want to make sure that uh, my throat is, uh, is uh, wet, so I'm going to be drinking some very, very uh, potent Costa Rican coffee here. Hmm. No way they call that coffee. They should call it birth control. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> so what if you are chief marketing officer, executive vice president of sales and marketing, etc.? Your job is basically what you are into is helping to create the company vision. And <clears throat> even if the vision is already created, part of what you need to do is to create the yearly vision, in other words, or the mission on how to get to the vision. Depends on how you want to uh, define it. I've heard it defined a million different ways. Uh, so that's really your job when you are in the C-suite in terms of sales, um, sales and marketing. Uh, although this is primarily uh, geared towards sales. Okay, so so what if you are uh, not an EVP of sales and marketing or a chief marketing officer? What if you're in the role of well, vice president of sales. Uh, if you're in the role of um, director of sales. Well, if you think about it, what your job is in this particular um, uh, function of the organization is to take that vision and to translate it into meaningful objectives. In other words, here is the vision that comes from on high sales managers, the people that are below you. And here are the objectives, the broad objectives that we need to cover for this time frame, uh, probably a year. So, you know, uh, consequently, if um, the, um, the, the um, vision for the year is to, quote unquote, significantly grow market share. Now, what does that word significantly mean? It means different things to different people. But if you get from upper management that significantly is somewhere around 5%, then one of your objectives is we will grow market share by 5%. And that becomes the objective. It's a lot more nebulous in the visionary stage, but it becomes more solid once we uh, uh, take uh, the um, approach of turning the vision into objectives. Okay, so then what is the role of the sales manager? The sales manager's role is really uh, to take that 5% growth of, of uh, market share and, uh, and then to uh, dole it out among the various sales reps, but then also to assist in creating the culture so that the sales reps want to actually uh, uh, move the, uh, that agenda forward. So you see, it goes from vision to functionally decomposing that vision into objectives and then further functionally decomposing the objectives into, into a format where a sales rep can then open their calendar on a daily basis and see what they have to do. Because, you know, uh, developing uh, an increase of market share of 5% may translate into me, for example, as a sales rep, I need to make an additional five cold calls a day. Okay, so now that I know that, I know every day I need to turn my 25 phone calls into 30 phone calls. 
and I'm able to get that down. So we begin that functional decomposition process all the way down to where a sales rep can open up their calendar and know exactly what they have to do. Now I said, well, what about general? What if you are in uh, an executive role, a leadership role, or a management role in the sales department? Is there a general concept? And I think there is. Let me explain this uh, in terms of some past experience. I used to own a chain of donut shops, and I had 150 employees. And um, I, I used to be in my shops uh, twice a day, some of them three times a day. Uh, is it any wonder that I had ballooned up to 285 pounds? Uh, that's not unusual um, uh, because I, I obviously, as, as a good manager, I had to um, sample my product, right? <laughs> uh, anyway, um, uh, the, the end result is um, I would spend a lot of time in the donut shops and uh, there are a lot of local visionaries, business visionaries would come in to, or get donuts and coffee and box and uh, boxes of coffee and so forth. And when they see me, we'd sit and talk a little bit. And uh, you know, they'd always ask me about how business was going, etc. And I'd ask them and so forth. But when when it came to uh, me asking about or uh, me telling them about my business, I would always ask them, well, "What business do you think I'm in?" And uh, they would say, well, that's easy. You, you schlep donuts. And they said, no, I'm not in the donut business. And they said, aha, I know. You're now starting to produce some high-quality coffees, cappuccinos, espressos. You're in the specialty coffee business. And I said, nah, I'm not in the specialty coffee business. So now they started to scramble. And they'd say something like, uh, breakfast sandwiches? I said, no, nah, I'm not in the breakfast sandwich business either. So at that point, they'd give up. So I don't understand. What business are you in? I said, that's easy. I'm in the business of developing people. Uh, and uh, over the course of uh, several years, I have taken basically um, a minimum wage employees, and I've converted them into managers uh, that were earning thirty, thirty-five thousand a year. And this is in nineteen ninety-nine dollars. Okay, so by today's standards, it would be uh, you know maybe forty percent higher than that. So I'm in the business of developing people. I'd like you to consider that sales leaders, uh, in terms of what your overarching goal is in terms of uh, management, uh, in terms of uh, uh, developing your people, or in terms of what your goal is. It should be developing your people. Developing your people means that when one of your sales reps have a problem and you're tied up doing a report, uh, if you can stop doing the report and spend a few minutes with them, because if your overarching goal is to develop your people, then you need to help your people. So I would think about that. Yes, granted, uh, uh, C-suite develop vision. Um, um, director and VP uh, take the vision, turn it into objective. Sales managers change that objective into a culture and an actionable format where sales reps can open up their calendar and know what to do. But everybody needs to embrace developing your people. If you do, you will have less churn and you will be able to crush your company's quota. Isn't that what it's all about? Bill Schrocker, thanking you for your time. Looking forward to seeing you in the next edition of Crush Your Company's Quota. Bye.